In this video, I want to talk a little bit about edge coloring. So hopefully you've already looked at some of the edge coloring stuff uh, in the textbook. But I want to explain in this video a way to think about them um, to try and help you get a sort of best coloring. Because we don't really have an algorithm um, that tells us do this and you get the best coloring. In fact, coloring graphs is a hard problem. Um, so I just want to give you some sort of mental tools to help think about it. So let's do a couple of examples. Color the edges of G using chi prime, that's the chromatic index of G, colors. So remember chi prime, that's going to be the best number of colors essentially. We want to be able to color this with a proper coloring using the fewest numbers of, um, of colors possible. And we know, <clears throat> um, we have Vising's theorem in the book, which tells us that it's either going to be the maximum degree or maximum degree plus one. So in this case, maximum degree is four. So we know it's only going to take 4 or 5, right? We know it's going to take at least 4 because, for example, all four of these edges have to have different colors, and all four of these edges have to have different colors. All four of these edges have to have different colors, right? Because to be a proper coloring, no two edges that are incident with the same vertex can receive the same color. Okay, so let me pull up my little color palette here um, and get some colors. Okay, so I recommend that you do this by thinking about matchings in the graph, okay? Because matchings, by their definition, don't have edges that are incident um, at the same vertex. So every color class is really a matching. So, for example, maybe I color this with this magenta E color, right? And then maybe I color, oh, let's see, this. And then this. Now, if you don't have colored pins, that's okay. You can just use like um, numbers like we have done for vertices in the past. So all of these are color number one. Okay, so I've got this matching here, right? And all these colors, none of these magenta edges are incident with um, the same vertex. Okay, so let me get a different color. Uh, maybe red. Okay, and then I'll color say this one red and this one red and then this one red and the idea is you're looking for the biggest matchings you can find um, because you're trying to use as few colors as possible, which means that you want as many edges as possible to get the same colors. Um, okay, so now you want to also sort of do this sort of thinking forward, you know, like, so let's just get our next color here. Um, maybe green. Okay, so maybe I can do this one. All right, so this is it. Now color number three, and then this one, and this one. Right, and it's fine for edges to cross as long as they're not incident at the same vertex. But now, is that going to be good for me? Mm, I'm not really sure. So if I do it like this, am I going to be able to color this using just four colors? No, I won't, um, which is fine. Maybe I can't color it using four colors. All right, see, so now I have this one is getting four, and then I'm going to need a new color. Maybe we'll just take black and give this one five. Oh, I forgot one over here. Um, so maybe we'll color this one with five as well. Okay, so now every edge has a color, but did we do the best possible? And the answer is, that's a really hard question to answer, which is part of the benefit of getting Vising's theorem, because it immediately narrows down our options of four or five. Okay, so you might play around and try and convince yourself, um, go back in the video and see if you can do better than five. So here we've got one with five. But for example, one of the edges only received one color. So maybe I made a poor choice somewhere along the way. So you might go back and see if you can do better than that uh, and just kind of play around with it and see. But I think that thinking in terms of matchings like we did here 
is the best way to think about coloring these things. So let's try another one. Okay, so again, we know immediately that the best we can possibly do is max degree or max degree plus one. So two, 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 three, 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 three. So either we can color this using three colors or we can color it using four colors. And of course, if we find a coloring using three, then that's the best. So above, we found a coloring using the larger number, five, and it's hard to know if that's the best. You know, we, it, there, maybe we could have done it using four, but if you get one that's the lower number, then you know for sure that's the best. Uh, okay, so let's start um, trying to do some of these. So maybe we color this one, uh, and then this one, and then this one this one. Okay, so those are all going to be color number one. Now let's get maybe a red. And let's try this and this and this edge. And hmm, now could I have done any better there? See, what I've done here is none of these three edges was used in that matching, but um, I have sort of three vertices left over, which means theoretically, maybe if I had made a better choice, I could have used up one of those. So let's try a different one. Um, so maybe. this and this and then this and this. So now I've got four of the same color which is better than having just three like I did the first time around. Okay, uh, let's just try another one. Now, I mean, I'm sort of just going along and doing these um, but, I mean, it takes a little bit of practice to get used to sort of trying to find good ways to do this. Um, so maybe this one now is a three, and this one is a three, and this one is a three, and this one is a three. And again, we got a matching. And now I've colored all the edges. I did use three, so three is the best in this case. Okay, now, but if I had gone with that first set of matchings that I did with my red edges, um, I wouldn't have gotten three. So you have to be careful and think about this. But the benefit of doing edge coloring is you know immediately that it's one of two numbers. We know three or four, or in the example above, we knew four or five. But I would encourage you to think in terms of matchings whenever you're doing these. I think that makes the problem a little bit easier.